Hi, welcome to another Knitting Expat tutorial. My name is Mina and I'm the host of Knitting Expat podcast. Today I'm going to show you how my how I use a crochet hook to seam my pinwheel scrap blankets, blanket blocks together. Now again, there are many ways you can choose to seam your blocks together that are entirely up to you. Um, there are even several different ways of doing the crochet method. Um, but the method I'm going to show you today is one that I sort of just figured out for myself. I, again, I'm pretty sure I'm not the first person to come up with this, but um, I struggled to find a good tutorial to show this method online, which is why I'm filming this one for you all today. Um, this is just a method that I like. It does give you with a ridge on the wrong side, and the seam is only partially visible, depending on how you stretch out your fabric on the right side. Um, but like I said, you can use whatever method you'd like. You can use the mattress stitch, which is a very popular seam method, which gives you an invisible seam, um, which if that is what you prefer, then go ahead and do that. I wanted to find a method of seaming, which wasn't going to be fussy. It was going to take a long time. It was going to be simple and fun to do. And that is what I find with this particular method. So what you will need are your two blocks. And these two blocks, in fact, have been, have been blocked out. They've been washed and pinned out and, um, for the size called for in the pattern, these blocks turn out to be about 25 centimeters squared uh, along 25 centimeters along each edge. And you don't have to block your squares before doing this. I've just chosen to do that in this case. The squares do look a bit crumpled because they've been in the bag. But um, and the way the pattern is written, you have a selvage edge, which makes this seeming really nice and simple. If you have followed the pattern the way it's written, um, you will have along each side of each along the outside of each triangle you should have 29 slip stitches so that's the total of 48 slip stitches along each edge or selvage stitches um, if you have changed the number of stitches that you have cast on for your squares and triangles for your triangles then that number will be different but it should be the same across each edge um, again making the seaming nice and simple so what you do is you line up your squares, you figure out how they're going to match up. So I'm going to seam with this side against this side. So you fold the pieces together, right sides facing, so the wrong side of the work facing you. you. Just take your crochet hook. And I've chosen a crochet hook, a three millimeter crochet hook, which is the same size as I used for the knitting needles that I knit the work in. So it's the same, same size loop. Your yarn, and I'm using a neutral grey, it's like a medium grey by Drops Farvel. I have another ball of this, this is just a partial skein, 50 gram balls. You really don't use much, so just a nice neutral colour, and I'm planning on using this for all of my blankets, so they're all the same. All the seams are the same colour. And you start at the top here, and you find the first, the first selvage stitch. So this one. And there we go. First two, hook on the yarn, and pull that through. Now I'm not a crocheter, so I don't hold the yarn correctly for crochet. I hold it like I knit in this case for the seaming method, and that works perfectly fine. So then you slip into the under the next two selvage stitches, and then you hook those together, and then you just chain that stitch. So you're doing a slip stitch crochet chain, as it were, to seam these two blocks together. Do that quickly. Like I said, I am not great at crochet, so um, but even I find this method the simplest way of seaming. And I try not to do my chains too tightly so that the seam doesn't pucker. But it is such, and I keep splitting the yarn. There we go. So you can see those chain stitches forming on this side.
to help with. Like I say, I am very... I do have not got much practice with crochet. So you see that's what it looks like on that side. And on this side you've got the crochet chains lining up along there. And then it's a nice little ridge seam along the edge. So I'm just going to carry on. And because you've got the same number of slip stitches, slip salvage stitches, sorry, along each side, it should be nice and simple and easy to match these up without worrying about having enough stitches on either side. Like I say, not the best at crochet. <laughs> Okay, I think I will just stop here to show you what this is looking like. So you can see, on the right side you have a very small, but the grey stitches are still visible a little bit on the right side of the work, which is why I suggest picking a nice sort of neutral colour to, um, so that if it is, you know, if it is seen, at least it's the same colour all throughout your blanket, it's nice and even, and it's not too obtrusive, it's not a very obvious scene. And this is what it looks like on the back. So you can see this is what the seam will look like. Nice clean ridge. And yeah, I really like this method. And so now I'm just going to carry on and finish this edge and show you what it looks like when it's done. And I will probably just fast forward this section. This is what it looks like from the side where you've got the chain stitches lining up. And on the side opposite, it's just like a little dash. It's almost like someone's just sat there sewn a line. And then this is what it looks like on the right side. Nicely seamed together. And there you go. And if you find somewhere along the line maybe something hasn't quite lined up or you've, you've missed a slip stitch, one of the selvage stitches on one side, you could just make it up again on the other end. It is really quite flexible, it is a very simple and very forgiving seaming method and as you see it still has quite a bit of stretch. I mean not as much stretch as the rest of the blanket or rest of the block but you know still enough stretch so that it's not going to be too stiff of a seam around your blanket. And yeah so there you go that's how I seam my blocks together. And that is my preferred method. But as always, you are free to use whatever method you prefer. So thank you again for joining me today. And I hope you found this useful. Okay, bye.